shortly. Uh, my name is Markus Ojala. Uh, uh, I've done this presentation with, with Lotta Hapla, my colleague from the Seinäjoki University of Applied Sciences. And this is uh, when Rui presented um, the four, four topics for the vegan trainings. Uh, this is on the plant-based proteins and this is related to um, the technology of vegetable drinks uh, and of course it's related also to, to dairy analogs but specifically for vegetable drinks and uh, uh, we've had uh, presentations the previous presentations by Jasenka and Nuno Jasenka th um, thought about the general general um, background of the project uh, why would we want uh, plant-based milk uh, Nuno thought talked about the uh, the processing side or the automation side and one interesting opportunity in in, in plant-based milk alternatives is this um, uh, well the market so of course uh, the, the market for the uh, plant-based milks it, it, it is expected to keep on growing for quite some time and uh, the reasons that uh, drive this growth are the things that Jasenka uh, told about. Uh, I, I'd add that I'd add that there's also uh, uh, one one topic is also the allergies and intolerances. So, for example, in uh, our neck in the woods in in Finland, uh, everybody drinks milk, but in most of the world, people are lactose intolerant. So, that's one one thing. Um, this presentation is about, um, well, one more slide about this, uh, why plant-based drinks. So um, there's a wide variety of, of raw materials that we can use. Uh, the, the processing equipment and uh, methods are quite familiar in, in the food, food industry. And uh, it also, also has a, a a simple, uh, simple use case that can be accepted quite easily by the uh, by by people. So it's not, it's not, um, yeah, it's not a, a difficult product in that sense. About the raw materials, there's a wide selection of these available. So uh, any anything from from pulses and legumes to to grain and cereal to nuts, almonds, and so on. And um, we have uh, this uh, specific um, slide or training set is, is uh, about our, our um, laboratory course in, in food processing. So where we have our students uh, to to make an old drink and basically the process is for for most of the almost all uh, plant-based proteins used in dairy analogs it's the same so we uh, the process goes from uh, the raw material to various steps of, of processing depending on the raw material and, uh, and the end use of the product but this can be separated to these steps a bit of um, excuse me, a more detailed view on uh, for an industrial scale use uh, for this uh, manufacturing vegetable drink, or in this case, oat oat drink is this is uh, uh, um, a process chart from Alpha Laval. So, depending on the scale of the operation. The, the steps might be added or not. And I will um, just one moment, please. <clears throat> uh, I will hope that this video will play back. Uh, we have, I'll show you the, because we have such a limited time, I will show you the video of our our processes and if you can Gemma confirm that you can also see 
this video. Uh, it seems that it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. it, it, one, one second, please. Excuse me. Uh, I will <clears throat> share another an, another window. So just one moment, please. Yes. Uh, now you should be able to see this this window if I'm correct. Yes. So this is um, our laboratory process that we give uh, in our our um, for our students. And the with our our students, we uh, do a lot of um, or we can do uh, different experiments. So we can uh, try different raw materials, give different processing parameters, and different um, post processing uh, options. But the same course can be used uh, to teach the students about the possibilities in manufacturing, for example, oil cream, and of course the same basic laboratory ex ex exercise can be also used in trying different raw materials. Uh, and of course this can be um, connected to other, other uh, learning uh, or courses that can be available. So, for example, we are trying to manufacture a old drink by hand. The student engineering students can also design a plant or a pilot process for for industrial use on the experiences that they have in the laboratory scale. One. Uh, experimentation could be the uh, the pressure used in this this step of the process. Então, Paulinho, estás bom? Opa, olha, cá estamos. Ontem já viste mandaram mais um mais um uma tarefa. <laughs> and of course, there's a uh, uh, the heat uh, heat treatment, and depending on the uh, heat treatment parameters, this also affects the end product. Uh, some um, some um, some amount is necessary for food safety, but it can be also um, changed according to the need. I will go back to my uh, presentation just for a moment. And I hope you can. Uh, See the uh, slide. It should be <clears throat> yeah. So uh, for for the EQ vegan uh, trainings, uh, these various steps of the process can be uh, used in, in in teaching and uh, experimenting. Uh, Depending on the facilities and the, the students, uh, in some you, you can focus in some of these steps to go in more more in depth, or perhaps uh, depending on uh, the need, you can skip skip a few. For example, uh, the the step of starch removal from oat and rice, of course, uh, can be added uh, can be enhanced by uh, combining it with chemical uh, studies. Um, so uh, one, one interesting thing about uh, of oat uh, processing is that uh, depending on the process, for example, the one that we showed uh, uh, previously, uh, there's quite a lot of the, the actual uh, oat drink is from the 
supernatant, and the uh, the sediment uh, is left as a as a side stream. And uh, currently, this this side stream, which is still um, has uh, has nutritional values, uh, is used as animal feed uh, in many many cases. And Uh, on the processing side, uh, this same laboratory exercise can be used as uh, to as a teaching method for various um, various uh, added ingredients and their effect on the uh, effect on the end product. So, especially for all drinks and uh, uh, vegetable drinks in particular, uh, the main thing is to add add the to add nutrients, so um, milk is fortified with vitamin D, uh, vitamin D3. Uh, of course, if we want to have a an analog analog product for for milk, then we must make it nutritionally uh, as close as we can. But the thing, for example, with with uh, vitamin D supplementation or uh, adding ingredients, is that of course vitamin D3 is actually animal based. While, while as vitamin D12, uh, D2 is, is plant-based. Yeah, so there's a bit of a, uh, depending on if you're going for vegetarians or flexitarians, and then if you're going for fully vegan product. Um, various mechanical uh, processing options can be used. Homogenization is one of, of course, the one that's uh, Quite widely used. Heat treatment, aseptic packaging. This is also uh, a good good way of uh, of showing the students how to handle the food food safety side of the uh, products. Um, for us uh, in, in in Finland, we we are quite. Uh, Quite into this uh, oat. Uh, oat is uh, a cereal that uh, grows actually quite well in in, in Finland. Uh, the Nordic weather cultivate is is quite amenable for for grains. Uh, or specifically specifically about for to uh, oat. I have a few slides here for the. Um, uh, about the nutritional value. So uh, when designing a plant-based drink, um, here you can see that there's a bit of difference between the raw materials. So uh, the energy energy amount, uh, this is in kilojoules, so we could also use kilocalories if that's simpler, but in this case it's kilojoules. Uh, uh, milk is milk is uh, the almond drink is the one that you could say that is uh, less um, has less energy. Uh, the fat amount between these different drinks uh, is also a um, a thing about sensor sensory perception and the texture of the product. So if if we would do a uh, an old drink without any any fat fat in it, it would not be as, um, it would not taste or feel as good as, uh, for example, milk. Uh, especially for cereal-based plant uh, drinks, the carbohydrates are quite high. And depending on the recipe used, uh, the protein content might differ quite a bit. So. Um, Depending on well the product you want to want to do, and of course the big big uh, difference with milk and other and then dairy analogs is that of course vegetable drinks don't have any lactose in them, and because they don't have any uh, animal-based fats, they don't they also has uh, quite a low amount of cholesterol. Um, here are uh, these few slides and these should be available to you after the uh, after this webinar.
and go into these details a bit more. Suffice to say that some of the uh, raw materials, of course, differ quite a bit in this uh, amount of nutrients available. The same is with, with vitamins. And of course, the composition of the fatty added acids might, might be a bit different uh, between various uh, possibilities. So uh, uh, one, uh, what we want to uh, wake up with our, with our students or, or um, communicate or to develop with our students is that uh, uh, in this process, the, uh, there's quite a lot of the material from the uh, dehulled oats is actually used as a side stream in animal feed. And of course, if you're trying to do a vegan product that is mainly uh, by its kilograms used mainly as an animal feed, then that might not be a best idea. Uh, of course, yeah, the, uh, the side stream as it is, is also nutritionally okay for human beings. It only needs to, it needs, uh, of course, development and novel processing technologies to make it as a uh, better, um, a good product for humans. Uh, you know, various plant-based drinks and especially oat drinks might have uh, some, some uh, issues in the uh, sensory uh, and textural uh, properties of it. So, for example, if, if you use oat, um, oat milk in, in your coffee, it might not um, it might not uh, blend blend well. It might have these like small small um, uh, flecks of uh, flecks of uh, oat fiber in it, and this might of course be a uh, um, uh, deal breaker for people. Uh, instead of just making normal milk or, or milk analog, we can also use these same raw materials, especially oats, to perhaps make probiotic drinks or make protein drinks for people who are into, into fitness. And of course, on the, on the marketplace, um, uh, it, it might be, it's, it's still a work in progress to have, to have this plant-based alternative as a, as a normal alternative. Uh, this has, um, uh, especially, in, uh, or at least in Finland, this has uh, changed quite a bit in just a couple of years. So in many places, if you go have a coffee, you can choose between uh, normal milk or, or plant-based, usually a no-based alternative for the milk. And of course, we, we hope to from our students, we hope to hear some, some new ideas that we haven't figured out yet. Here's a list of, uh, of references. Um, I, I won't go to, to, uh, through them because it's not maybe directly relevant. You can go through this when you have the material. 